Hey there, this is Mario from shockingfit.com and I'm here on top of Grouse Mountain. This is the peak of Vancouver and as you can see behind me, it's really a beautiful view and you can see the sky right here. And uh, the topic of this video will be uh, what the science know currently about longevity and dieting. And that was uh, one topic that I came across just recently and it's something that hasn't been studied for a while. And I decided to shoot a quick video because I found it very, very inspiring to uh, basically have knowledge on this and how some things we can do in our life to extend our life, to increase our quality, to reduce the chance of uh, diseases and all these good things. And the topic got inspired a little bit by a podcast that I listened. Uh, it's called Sigma Nutrition Radio by Danny Lennon. I want to give a big shout out to Danny. And the specific podcast that I'm going to talk about today a little bit is from uh, Dr. Eric Ravison, who did a study on longevity and uh, metabolic rate, so caloric restriction and and increasing your lifespan. So these studies are hard, right? And that's what's fascinating because I mean, if you put humans on a two-year-long study, such as uh, the one that Eric Ravison did, is you basically tell people you need to eat 25% uh, uh, less than your maintenance for two years, which is super fucking hard. So what they did in the study was they first screened out people really good to make sure that they're uh, all committed, that they're all on point with, with the diet, that they know nutrition, that they're nutritionally savvy, basically. They know how to manage their macros, and like a little bit at least. They know how to get the good food and um, like stuff like airplane pilots and uh, people like airplane pilots or someone who is like moving around a lot. They wouldn't have a place in the study because they wanted to get a lot of consistency. And so that was one of the big things in this study and it's the first one it lasted two years there was 220 subjects normally these studies haven't been done on humans so far they have been only done on animals and that was kind of the i believe that was one of the inspirations that dr ravison got god was uh okay let's see if that same uh, caloric restriction that works for animals works for humans and the findings were absolutely fascinating so so far, what do we know about longevity is simply from studying uh, some subcultures of the world that we found out that have the longest lifespan. So I think one of the islands is called Icaria in Greece. It's one of the islands where every third person reaches 90 or above. And a lot of their longevity is linked to their lifestyle, basically low stress, uh, following a Mediterranean diet and um, taking a lot of naps. I believe that was one of the things. And in general, they're socializing, they're keeping themselves active. And it's just a small island uh, in Greece that does have all these uh, like these people and they were studied. Another one was, I think, the island of Okinawa. And you probably heard of Okinawa diets. Some of their, they be became a fad for a very short period of time. And also, uh, I believe they had ate about 15% less calories than the mainland Japanese. And also, they've been uh, one of the longest living people in the world. Uh, I, I think that was up until Americans came in. And then now, now it's like pretty much similar as the mainland Japan. So those were all the studies that we know so far. That was like simply some correlation and seeing what these people did. And that was supposed to like give us some indication. So... Dr. Eric Ravison decided, okay, let's actually study, let's do a controlled study and see what's happening. And it was quite fascinating. So the, the key marker of longevity, obviously you can't study someone for 85 or 100 years to see if they actually live longer. So they had to find a key marker of indicator of longevity. And they actually uh, mentioned, uh, they actually measured something called reactive oxidative stress, ROS. Uh, and that's simply the metabolic stress that your cells have to go through when they process proteins, fats, and carbs. So uh, that's basically in your body a marker that, I that is an indicator how much your DNA and your proteins and lipids are getting damaged from like uh, processing food energy and while making ATP. And that marker seems to be um, definitely impacted by lowering metabolic rate by reducing calories. And you might be thinking, okay, well, I mean, that's cool, but I'm not going to eat 25% calories, 25% uh, less calories than my maintenance for my whole life just to get that benefit. And you don't have to. And the beauty of this is that it, this is just an indicator for us that, 
a lot of the things that are culturally being done so far, like fasting or just recently, like intermittent fasting, things like lean gains, they have some benefits of reducing that oxidative stress as well because they're simply limiting the amount of food that we have, like the availability, the abundance of food is no longer there because you're limiting yourself to eating in a, just a short period of time. So the gist of this where, where it's like coming into a, as our human nature is that we are kind of used to rotating between those periods of like uh, feast and famine, right? Our bodies are very well adapted to regulate our energy levels, our metabolism when we don't have enough calories. And that's simply where the intermittent fasting thing comes as well. I talked about this a little bit in my how to deal with hunger when you're doing intermittent fasting video is that we humans are really well adapted to not having food. And we're also adapted to when we have a lot of food to store energy. And that's kind of one thing that I would say I got a lot out of this is just, I guess, confirming some of the research that also was done on intermittent fasting and on fasting in general, like alternate fasting, stuff like Eat, Stop, Eat, that book that talks about fasting like for one day and then next day you eat whatever you want. And another form of fasting, I think alternate one was that one day you can eat whatever you want and then the next day you eat like less than 600 calories for men, which is Quite, uh, like a quite intense uh, type of fasting, but they did find that this also reduces the oxidative stress. So one thing that uh, to keep in mind with this is that there are also benefits when, when it comes to having a uh, to longevity when it comes to like when you have a lot of muscle mass and that's kind of the, the, the other side of the story. So that strict hardcore fasting that you would do like let's say not eat anything for a day and then then basically next day you would eat like as much as you want it's not the most optimal protocol for gaining muscle mass and that's kind of where the confusion lies because on one hand we want to maximize muscle growth and we want to like maximize our energy levels in the gym we want to maximize our strength and on the other hand we want to do reduce that oxidative stress and, and prolong our life so it's kind of like a trade-off now and you can go in that direction okay let's purely optimize muscle growth and if you read studies by Dr. Brad Schoenfeld like Alan Aragon they will say okay this is the how you can get the maximum benefits you want to spike up your protein several times a day you want to spread out you want to do a little bit of nutrient timing spread out that protein to get those uh, muscle protein synthesis spikes and then again when you could go to do the fasting thing you obviously don't have protein spikes that often you maybe have like two meals or three meals a day max if you're doing lean gains that's going to be like uh, three meals max in that eight hour window i mean you can spread it out a little bit but it's going to be smaller portions so like this those spikes won't be as high so it's kind of finding that trade-off and finding that balance between building muscle and strength and like bone density through training, which is also good for longevity, versus like going full into fasting, caloric restriction, and pretty much being skinny. So it's up to you. This is like your personal choice, which one you want to go in which direction. Intermittent fasting is a very famous protocol that kind of allows you to have, I guess, the best of both worlds. And I would say it comes down to using that process of hermesis, which is just a fact that our body when exposed to a mild stressor we're, will adapt and become stronger and that's one thing when you do a cold shower that makes your immune system stronger because you simply expose yourself to a mild stressor that is not strong enough to induce uh, like illness but it is enough to cause your body to adapt and strengthen your immune system one other thing why veggies are so good for you, like raw veggies, is because they contain a little bit of toxins that are mild stressors that force your body to adapt, and that's why you become stronger and healthier from eating a lot of vegetables. And another mild stressor is simply skipping a meal. That's a mild stressor on the body where you don't uh, stress, your, stress your body with it, that oxidative stress, but you also don't give it the calories when it's expected. And that's something that I mean, living in, in uh, 2015, now coming 2016, and I guess the whole 21st century is all this abundance of food. We're constantly kept in a, in a comfort zone where we have an abundance of calories. We have an abundance of high caloric density foods, and that's kind of spoiling our system in a way, and it's making us weaker as human beings. So that's one thing to consider, and I would say the main, the, the main takeaways from this whole idea of longevity 
is simply try out periods of like try skipping a meal try fasting try different kinds of things try cold showers try pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone very often you're gonna see that it's very manageable and that you're gonna become a stronger person just by the way how you feel and then also there's science and all this evidence proving that it's actually good for you so don't skip out on your veggies eat your veggies get that hormesis going on one cool story on hormesis i think if i recall one of the roman emperors uh, he was actually giving himself small doses of poison to make himself immune to the poison. So back when he was like uh, old and already when they tried to poison him because that was the most famous way to kill people back in the days of Rome is he was immune. They couldn't kill him anymore because he was just immune to the poison. So that's kind of cool and he used the process of hermesis which is a very fascinating thing uh, to strengthen his own immune system to become immune to the, to the toxic. So that's pretty cool i hope you guys learned something from this uh, video and i would basically say the main lessons push yourself a little bit take yourself outside of the comfort zone try intermittent fasting try fasting it's not there for nothing in your religion in your culture and people around you are trying different kinds of things there there's some merit to that and there's some ancient wisdom playing a role here as well and that's pretty cool and you see here i'm enjoying uh, my time at grouse month and i'm gonna have some uh I think I'm gonna have some food now and I'm freezing, so I'm gonna go inside, get some, get a little bit warmer. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to click subscribe on the channel below. If you have comments on the topic and you feel like you wanna add something or you just wanna say this opened your eyes to something that you wanna try out, if you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. Let's discuss, share this video with your friends if they are interested in longevity and dieting and nutrition and just learning more. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.